Morning guys, it is November 6th, 9.27 a.m. The market is about to open in uh, a little over two minutes here and I'm looking at MOGO, which is the top gainer. It's up about 76% and it had a really nice run. Of course, I wasn't trading at that time, <laughs> but, it, but it basically gave me the uh, textbook uh, run up, pull back and you know breaking the high of the first minute candle and if you know if i would have been trading my stop loss would have been down here and uh this thing continued higher i'm not sure how long i would have held you know all my shares um because it's still you know like a bit choppy going up but it overall had a nice run um you know up until about here i guess this is like a normal thing that happens around eight o'clock where you get these crazy um ranging candles so I'm not sure how I would have reacted if I was still holding, you know, during this this time. I, you know, generally don't like to be holding anything right around that eight o'clock time because it just kind of goes crazy. So I probably would have sold somewhere around here. It looks like a lot of people kind of have that same uh, mentality because you see this huge flush, but there was still uh, plenty of interest in the stock because then it runs up. So I think a lot of people don't like to be in around that eight o'clock time. So that's good to know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. All right, so it did have a bit of a sell off. Um, let's see here, but I would like to catch a pop to the upside. Gotta time it just right. Then we gotta see if we get filled. If we don't, it it could be a very good thing. Here it comes. I'm in. Try to get half out there. Whoop. Wow, that flushed down really fast. So that's the risk in, in that trade <laughs> is that, uh, you know, I only got like two cents on that first pop, unfortunately. Yeah, so that, you know, that's definitely a risky move. Um, I wasn't expecting it to, to flush down quite so rapidly after, you know, it ran up like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, with this nice run, you know, I figured I'd take a shot at it. At least, I mean, uh, I guess I could say, you know, I only had half my shares in when it flushed down, so it was a little bit less of a loss than it would have been. But that's a trade, you know, that I'm, I'm debating on whether or not I should continue taking. Next week, I'll probably... Uh, not do that one anymore just because it hasn't been working out often enough it looks like i got a little bit lucky on the way out but not really um yeah so the first sell i made uh two and a half cents per share times three uh so was that five seven and a half cents minus the two cents five and a half cents but then i lost um like nine cent eight and a half cents times three on the on the uh last sell so so it was a red trade not not hugely red but 
Man, this uh, has this hammer looks so nice that that uh, I'm kind of tempted to try to to get in for the recovery here because I feel like this thing is pretty much guaranteed to run. There it goes right there. All right, I might regret this. <laughs> All right, there's half out there. All right, I'm gonna get get the rest out there. It's not really a trade I was supposed to be taking, but um, and it wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want to call that? I, I, like I said, I'm only supposed to take one trade per session, but um, so I guess I broke a rule there. But um, yeah. Let me see. I'm, I just want to make sure I'm still recording. Yeah. So this just looked too good. And apparently it wasn't. <laughs> it was like a fake out. But, uh, I, you know, I did scalp a little bit of uh, profit there. Um, so let's see. Yeah, I mean... Uh, probably still I'm, I may have made made back what I lost uh, let's see because uh, here I made like about eight cents on the move so it'd be 24 cents there so I think I made um, let's go let's take a look at the stock PL because I don't think I've traded Mogo before Yeah, so with that second trade, I ended up making back my um, my loss. So that's a good thing. The bad thing is that I took a second trade, but um, you know, you heard me talking there. I don't, I don't know if I'm maybe I'm just making excuses right now. <laughs> Welcome to the psychology of trading. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, you heard me kind of saying, you know, that uh, that first trade that I took is probably a trade I'm not going to be taking anymore. And uh, the second trade that I took is it would be the trade that I would take instead, which is, you know, when these stocks run up really strong in the pre-market like this one, although it did have this sell off here. Um, uh, you know, I like to try to catch the reversal on the way back up and you really never know if what you're looking at is a real reversal or if it's a pullback on the way down until after, you know, that, that pattern finishes forming, you know, uh, so that's also risky, but less risky than the, uh, that very open, you know, the trade on the first one minute candle. And the reason why I take either of those trades is to be honest with you, because um, you know, I'm not really trying to be a full-time trader. I'm trying to trade every day while I can. Um, but, uh, I have a lot of other things going on, a lot of other things that I have to do that take up a lot of my time. So my, one of my goals is to get in and out for whatever profit I can, um, you know, every day at, at, in each session, you know, I, I usually trade, um, one trade per session and uh but then i like to just get out and and move on you know maybe make a video about it real quick and and upload it and, and then that's about it and th that's good for a lot of things you know it kind of keeps me out of the emotional trading as well so um so anyway that's that's the trade for um the uh, f the first session of the day and technically was two trades but um I felt pretty strong that that we were going to get a pop there. My entry wasn't really ideal. Um, it, it probably would have been better to enter for the break of this candle, and I would have caught a lot more of that that upside pop. But um, but you saw this thing form live. You know, it looked like it, like it was heading for the uh, high of the day there and and going to break out. So I felt like it was a pretty good chance that it, that it would go higher it didn't but again you know my strategy to get out 
um, half my shares uh, on the first pop and then sell half as it comes down works pretty well in, in these type of scenarios. So, um, so I knew what I was getting into and I knew what I was risking and, um, yeah, so whatever, I'm a big boy. <laughs> um, anyway, I mean, what would I be saying if that trade failed, you know, that, uh, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be taking that because, uh, I'm only supposed to take one trade per session. So I don't have to think about this one. But uh, yeah, definitely next week. So today's Friday. Um, next week, it looks like uh, I'm, I'm probably just going to stop doing that trade because I think it's failed every single time this week. Um, it doesn't always fail. You know, uh, if I keep taking it, I'm sure I'll hit something eventually. But uh, it just doesn't seem like, at least the way the market is right now, that uh, it's working out often enough to, to keep it up. So I'm going to take that trade away from, from my strategy and, uh, you know, just look to, to get into these, to the recoveries of these strong stocks or reversals. And, and then that's it. This thing is probably still going to reverse. I bet you, you know, almost anything that it will. I just don't really want to hang around, you know, I'm definitely not taking any more trades, but, um, like I said, you know, I, I don't really want to hang around and wait for that. Although it might happen pretty soon here. <laughs> so, um, all right. Yeah, uh, anyway, have a good weekend and thanks for watching all my videos and thanks for everyone who comments. I really appreciate all the views and the comments and the support to make more videos. So, um, hopefully these videos are helping you guys. Uh, I'll probably make another one, uh, later this afternoon in the aftermarket if there's a, a good trade to take uh in the pre-market i did take a trade but it wasn't that interesting and it only you know i was only able to make one cent because it did fail it was essentially the same pattern that uh this mogo had that i showed you earlier same exact pattern but um uh, my chart's doing something weird now so i can't show you but the uh because this definitely is not what it looks like <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the same exact pattern that MOGO had in the morning where it ran up and did the pullback and I got in, uh, on the uh, break of a one minute candle and, uh, and then the thing failed, but I, you know, I never hit my stop loss. It kind of came back up to my entry and gave me a chance to get out with like, uh, you know, just one cent profit, which is better than a loss. So, cause I think I was risking, you know, enough to lose like 20 cents or something like that. So I got out um, before I had a loss, and uh, and then the thing flushed down, you know, and and the loss would have been really big if I would have waited. So so that was a smart move.